Hi there, and welcome back to another Chemtrail video. Um, I've been having an ongoing conversation with uh, some Facebook friends about Chemtrails. Um, they are Chemtrail conspiracy theorists, so um, I thought I would do this video explaining how contrails are formed. Um, as a secondary matter, I'll also discuss how the chemtrail conspiracy theory has come about. Um, so this video is primarily to them, but it's also to anybody who's interested in science, um, environmental science, or conspiracy theories. If you are or know someone who is a uh, chemtrail conspiracy theorist, feel free to direct them to this video. It'll be perfectly good for anybody else, too. Um, so I wanted to answer the question, how are contrails actually formed? Um, a good illustration is if you go out on a really cold day and you kind of go, and you see your breath come out, it comes out as a fog, um, that's kind of similar to the way, it's actually very similar to the way contrails are formed. <clears throat> um, the act of burning jet fuel, one of the byproducts of that is actually water vapor. Um, and, of course, there's also heat. So the air coming out of a jet engine is hot and it's humid. Um, now, I think everybody knows that the atmosphere, that air, can hold water vapor. Um, that's where rain comes from. But it's also important to know that it can only hold a limited amount of water vapor uh, before condensation occurs. The point at which condensation starts to occur is called the point of saturation. Um, down here at ground level, it's also something that's called the dew point. You've probably heard that if you've watched um, weather on television. Um, and the amount of moisture that can be contained within air uh, increases with temperature. So the hotter the air, the uh, greater the amount of water vapor can be contained without condensation happening. That's why, like, if you have, you know, a, a glass of tea or a can of Coke and it's cold, um, it'll get condensation on it, it'll get wet, because it cools the air immediately around it, and that air can no longer hold the amount of moisture that is available in the room at large, so you get water droplets. So anyway, this plane flies through the atmosphere, and this hot, moist air comes out behind it. And because the air is hot, it can also sap moisture out of the surrounding air before it cools off. But even if it doesn't do that, it comes out hot and moist. If the, the surrounding air is very cold, then it cools down that jet exhaust quickly, and it produces a fog, a mist, like when you breathe out in the air in the wintertime. Um, depending on atmospheric conditions, this may be reabsorbed very quickly. Um, for instance, if the sun is hot, that can happen. Um, if temperatures aren't that cold up there, then it'll happen. But if the air, if the surrounding air where this plane is traveling is very cold and very humid, then it does not reabsorb that uh, vapor trail immediately. What it does is freeze it. So now you have microscopic ice crystals which are much harder to reabsorb without melting them first. Um, in this trail behind the plane. Um, so sometimes you go out and you see a plane flying and you don't see any contrail behind it. Um, there usually is a little bit, you just can't see it because of atmospheric conditions and how quickly it's reabsorbed. Um, other times it's like there's this huge contrail and it just stretches far across the sky and it's very noticeable. Well, that's just because atmospheric conditions have been favorable to the creation and the maintenance of this contrail. And it can happen anywhere in the atmosphere. Um, as long as the air is cold enough to produce a good contrail and then freeze it. There are other ways that contrails can form. Like, they can form at uh, vortices at the tips of wings and stuff like that. Um, but those are less common and less important to discuss. So I'm just going into the one way that contrails form. And they all tend to either persist or be quickly evaporated in the same way. So where do chemtrails come from? 
Um, well, when a conspiracy theorist looks up at the sky and sees a contrail and doesn't know what it is. Okay, that was a little facetious, but that kind of is the way it works. Um, people are not, Americans especially, are not typically observant of things. Um, don't really pay attention to things. So a lot of Americans haven't spent a lot of time just looking up at the sky. I, mean, I remember when I was a little kid, um, my mom showed me how planes make clouds in the sky, and I loved it. I thought it was great. So whenever I was outside, which I was outside a lot, I would look up at the sky and I would look for the contrails. I would look for the, the clouds the planes made and I could see where the planes had gone. So the first time I heard this conspiracy theory, I was already very familiar with contrails. I was also an, an adult, um, a moderately scientifically literate adult, so I knew how contrails formed, I knew what they looked like, and I knew that's what I was looking at. <clears throat> but not everybody does. Um, unfortunately, Americans not only are not very observant, but are also incredibly poorly scientifically educated. Um, Americans are scientifically illiterate. And that's the fault of a lot of different things, um, but it's true. So when Americans hear a claim that seems to be scientific, uh, maybe it's pseudoscientific, it uses some kind of scientific jargon, and, um, they have basically no way to measure it, to tell whether it's believable or not. So they base it on, well, does this sound right to me? And they can't tell if it actually makes sense from a scientific standpoint. Now, there have been um, plans put forward and apparently tested to try to combat global warming. They were produced by the scientific community, by government, um, and some of those plans have involved aerosol spraying of some microparticles of things like aluminum. The point would be to reflect a portion of sunlight up in the upper atmosphere. Um, this would be far above where planes typically fly. This would be very high in the upper atmosphere. And this, these particles would stay in the atmosphere for an extended period and would reflect some of the sunlight, reduce the heat on Earth. Um, this is not what people are seeing in the air, but they hear this and they look up and, and somebody tells them, hey, you see that? That's, that's a chemtrail. And then they can point to these reports that there have been you know, tests um, of spraying aerosol substances in the air. And it just seems completely legitimate that these are chemtrails. But they're not. 